bread to me is a mixture of flour and water that is transformed into something through the course of fermentation that transcends the simplicity of those basic ingredients. He is really into bread, like no one I've ever met. In cooking school, I was so obsessed with learning how to make bread. I would wake up at three in the morning, drive an hour and a half to work for Richard Bourdon, who became my mentor, and then come back to make my night classes at school. I limited myself to the most primitive way of making bread with the goal of achieving this loaf that's, that's kind of an expression of, of the place where we were baking. When you let your bread rise 8, 10, 12 hours in a cool environment, it has time to develop a ton of character. The first time I did that was mainly just because I was totally sleep deprived and I had to let it cool down so that I could get 7 or 8 hours sleep. But the flavor was a revelation to me. It was, it was so much more complex than what I was used to from the shorter rise. The crust colored more beautifully because the sugars were, were caramelizing in a different way from that long rise. And I've, I've never gone back. To develop the basic recipe for our country loaf of tartine and translate that to a home baker, we just scaled it down and then we set up a blog and asked a few of our friends that didn't have baking experience if they wanted to try out this recipe. Chad and I met through a mutual friend and we started making surf dates. As soon as you get into a surfing relationship with somebody, that's sort of what you do. I think surfing and bread making are really complementary. They're both reliant on weather patterns and the exact same weather patterns that I'm constantly paying attention to for surf affect my bread. Dave's cafe is pretty small. He has no baking equipment, so it was a really challenging environment in which to set up a bread program. Secretly, I think I wanted to convince him to let me use his bread at the restaurant, but he then decided it was a good time to teach me how to make bread. And we came up with this technique in, in the cafe that's pretty radically different from what we do at Tartine. He mixes the dough at night after dinner service and the bread just rises in the cafe out on the tables all night. So we just had to completely alter the way the, the leaven is made and the timing and the percentages. Yet he still gets this amazing bread with a, with a really wonderful flavor and, and, and amazing keeping qualities. Bread is kind of the cornerstone of the whole restaurant. That's not something we thought was going to happen. It comes with the soups, we make sandwiches with it, we make bread pudding with it. We make just about everything that comes with bread. It's a part of my life now. Marie is a friend and a musician. Her trio is playing at at the bakery every other Friday night. We start playing at five, which is when the, the bread comes out of the oven. We were producing the book in the bakery a lot of the time while she was playing, and we just asked her if she wanted to be one of the bread testers. Well, this is a starter that I sometimes, among friends, affectionately call my lover. Right when I started learning how to make this, I didn't know anything about it. I had a feeling that she would be very meticulous and sure enough she was keeping note cards and timelines. She even took her starter to Brooklyn when she was there uh, for some performances. I thought that I just really had to always be with it and feeding it and otherwise it's gonna die and we can't let, let him die. Unlike the majority of cookbooks that I've seen which look more or less like a science textbook, this one was more of a narrative. It really is more about developing intuition to know what each stage the bread should feel like or the starter should smell like. Her beautiful bread is the loaf that's featured in the basic recipe in the book. I think she didn't realize how good her bread actually was when she ended up baking it. Depending on what the temperature is like, what the room feels like, the outcome is always different and you have to adjust to it. And I think that's the process I enjoy. If you just learn the way the basic ingredients in bread work together, you really can achieve any kind of 
bread that you want. Making bread is sort of a grounding experience because every day you start fresh and you have this full cycle of mixing a dough, letting it rise overnight and then baking it and then you start again. You come full circle every day. He's an inspiration to me for having dedicated so much of his time to making the perfect bread. You can't die without eating Chad's bread. Once, at least. I'm making bread, obviously, but I think of myself more as a catalyst for these processes that are already kind of in motion. They're already happening. I'm just kind of steering them in a direction that I like. My favorite thing is to slice into a, a warm loaf of bread, still warm from the oven, and, and just smell the aromas that have developed from that long rise wafting out of the loaf.